one thing, these uh, 20 hour waits to get stuff delivered are starting to kind of take their toll on me. You know, because I was tired when I got here last night. I had been up for, or yesterday morning rather, I had already been up for 19 or 20 hours straight, so I was pretty tired. Stay up as long as I could, you know, used to. When I was younger, and I know I'm not old yet, but I, I'm not as young as I used to be. I could, uh, I could stay up as long as I wanted to. Right? So I could get to a place, you know, if I didn't need to go to work for, ten, for 20 hours, it didn't matter how long I'd already been up, I could stay up for another 10 hours then go to sleep and wake up fresh off a 10 hour break or 10 hours of sleep. Nowadays, if I'm, if I've already been up for 20 hours when I get to a place because of whatever reason, I'm, I'm going to pass smooth out watching TV or whatever, like sleep real, real hard and wake up. And then what inevitably happens is, you know, I'll stay up six, seven hours, eight hours, <laughs> try to go back to sleep and get like four or five hours of sleep and then have to get back up again. Feeling like crap. <laughs>
I'm getting two hours past my appointment here, so I can't just sit here and do nothing. That guard seemed to understand it. I've actually had a lot of attitude from certain guards when you do that. But you know, I can't just sit here and not check, right? I gotta make sure you got my phone number and all that correct. So, you know, it took me a minute to get a hold of them, but I didn't wanna walk back up there, so, cause it's cold and I'm lazy. <laughs> Hi, butt. I got a little lap dog, a little lap dog. Hi, buddy. Anyway. Just still waiting on the doctor, he said. Uh, yeah. Nothing we can do about that. You getting, you getting aggressive. What are you doing? You got, you got both your hands on me. You trying to throw hands? You trying to throw hands? Still another 15 minutes. Got the door finally. It's not that cold, it's just windy, so it just kind of sucks all the energy out of you and makes it colder than you normally would. Should get me a pair of good cutters, but I've always done it this way. Oh, come on now. It's hard to do with one hand. They gave me a dock door if they're not ready to unload me. Told me to break the seal, slide the tandems, keep the door closed. Yeah, I already told that. Which means they're not gonna unload me yet. They just put me in the dock door. Let's check out the little space. Pretty scattered, huh? Boy, they cut that uh, COVID policy stuff out as soon as they could. During COVID, they'd come out to your truck and collect your bills. It'll be the last time I listen to the security guard when they tell me not to open my doors. I just gotta pull out, open my doors, and back back up. It's really stupid. You got this idiot. Every time you come to Kansas City, he doesn't stop running his mouth all morning long. Every day. The dude loves to hear his own voice, man. I don't have anything against preachers. I don't have anything against Christians. I am technically a Christian. I just don't go to church because church is all jacked up with all kinds of sorts of stuff that I don't agree with or believe in. You know, they all got their own rules and they all believe each other are evil. So I, uh, I lost faith, faith in the church a long time ago. But, you know, this guy, you know, he, he thinks he knows everything. Doesn't stop talking. The problem I have with that is that we use these radios to communicate with each other. It helps us 
get around and, and you know, not be in each other's way and this dude. Yeah, the way, the truth, and the life. No. Doesn't stop talking. Keeps that mic triggered the whole time. Just coming through town one day about a month ago, you know, freaking freak snowstorm and truck drivers are talking to each other saying, hey, you know, there's a wreck here and, you know, this road's closed, you can get around it this way and then this guy comes on the air. Uh, I wasn't really intimidated by the guy, he's taller than I am and people love him. Millions of people know who he is, but I just wanted to show him someone who is far greater than he is and he just scoffed at it. That's what I would have expected. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ? That'll make all the difference. It doesn't really matter what, who, who, uh, God loves his own voice. with that guy off air trying to see if he was at all humble in his so-called belief system and he's not he, he wasn't willing to hear anything he's just going to tell everybody how evil they are sitting there calling people whores and this and that I'm like yep you're the holy one right you're the special boy that knows the king you know, you got your special words and your special beliefs and everyone else is going to go to hell so why would anybody listen to you again I don't have anything against Christians. I have against people that think they're Christians and think that they're doing God's work. Just being hateful. Not helping anybody by doing that. So. I talked to him for like 30 minutes. You know, he wants to say the, play the same game a lot of those preacher types like to play, which is just, you know, they're really good at memorizing certain chapters and certain verses, but they don't understand the moral behind what they're, they're uh, quoting. They're like, well, can you tell me what it says in such and such chapter, such and such this? It's like, okay, no, I can't because I haven't memorized the Bible. I've read the Bible. I've read it a lot. I've spent lots of time reading it. I just don't find it necessary to sit there and memorize verses and chapters so that I can gotcha people when they disagree with me. They're saved without having to do anything except for say they're saved, which is like, no. You don't get just to walk around being the wretched soul that you are and say that you're saved and you know trick God. You know, it's a it's a daily thing, man. It's a daily struggle to try to do good things and try to be a, a good person. And I fail often. You know, I have a temper. I have a, a sour mouth, but I do try, and I do try to humble myself before God and admit that I'm a sinner and that I'm not good. You know, I, I try to be as good as I can be, but I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong. But guys like that, you know, he's going to get up there and just plug up the radio and tell everybody how evil the world is. It's like, okay, and you're, and what authority do you have to speak on that? It is now 8.30. That's four hours I've been here. They haven't touched this trailer. I've only been in the dock for two hours. Four hours past my original appointment. And from experience, I know from the moment they start unloading this thing, which they haven't done yet. Is the light even red yet? Oh, the light's red. They still haven't touched the trailer though. Uh, it's gonna take another two hours at least when they start actually unloading it. Are you happy about it? I'm not, I'm not that happy about it. What are you doing? Is that you? You don't like, you don't like yourself? Boop. <laughs> he got booped. It's 12.30. We'll live here at 4.30. Or I had to delete some stuff, but yeah. It is 12.30. Got here at 4.30. Sadly, that is not abnormal for AWG. And it's only AWG. And maybe a couple others, but any AWG, it can take two hours or it can take eight hours. And 
It's a roll of the dice. They make no apologies. They don't give a crap. You know. I can't even uh, try to put some you know, sugar on top of it by being polite in the office. I walk into the office and I start to walk towards the sign that says check out. Because the, one of the uh, desks say check in. And the other one says check out. I go to walk towards it and I hear the woman at the check in office say, can I help you? So I'm checking out. She's like, well, I can still help you. Okay. okay. It's like, well, I was just, whatever. I just told her the door. And she digs through some stuff. She hands me, a, uh, slides through this tiny hole, a stack of papers, 15 deep. Says sign both the X's. Like, okay. First X is on the top page. I start to flipping through the pages. I said, Where, where's the second X? She's like, well, it's right there. It's like, excuse me, if I could see it, I'd have signed it. Where's the second X? She's like, well, and she uh, took the papers that I didn't need and gave me back the ones that I needed to sign. I'm like, okay, wouldn't it have done it in my head? I'm like, wouldn't it have been just as easy to do that from the start? Just give me the paper at a time? But whatever. I didn't say any of that because, you know, it's not going to do any good to get shitty with them. Even though they're being shitty with me. Whatever. Sitting around for eight hours and then get a crappy attitude from the people in the office. Like, like I owe them something. Okay. I also asked him, you know, she handed me a bunch of stuff and stuff I didn't recognize to sign. Now, what, what am I signing? It had a bunch of numbers and stuff on it. I didn't know what it was. Like, what am I signing for? It's like, it's just uh, something you need to sign to get your bills. It's like, I mean, is it OS&D or something? Because I need to know what I'm signing. It's like, it's just re uh, recognizing that we're receiving. There was no OS&D. It's like, okay. It's like, anything I said was like, she had to be difficult about it. God forbid you ask where you're signing or follow signs, right? You walk in, there's a sign that says check in and check out, you know, checking out. I, I go to walk towards the checkout thing and am treated like an idiot for doing that. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't make any damn sense. Can't expect anything less from these shippers other than to treat drivers like trash. It didn't used to be that way. Even in my 10 year career, it's changed. I mean, there was always a few shippers that were really crappy with people, but it was, you know, the average was, they were really kind and, you know, they appreciative of the job we do. I think part of it is people are frustrated with like foreigners that can't speak our language and can't follow rules. So if you have a question, they're like really crappy because they have to field questions all day from people that don't even speak English. And I've seen the interactions of that and how frustrating that can be. Because okay? the guy's like, doesn't know what to do, can't understand a single thing you're saying, and then they get mad at you because they can't understand. It's like, you know, I don't think I'd go drive in Czechoslovakia without speaking whatever language Czech, right? No, that's Chechnya. I don't know. See, I'm an idiot American, so I don't know any of that stuff. Actually, I heard a pretty good joke. It's uh, it's not that Americans are stupid for not knowing anything about global, you know, nations and stuff. It's just that in America, you're not relevant. Like, we don't care what your president's name is. Not, not to offend anybody that's not an American, but as an American, we're just not really concerned with European politics or geographics. You know, I like history, but, like, I like to read about history and stuff, but I don't sit there and memorize presidents' names of, like, you know, I couldn't tell you who the president of France was. You could sit down and offer me $10 million if I could tell you the name of the president of France, and I would not receive that money. No idea. I don't really care.
signed in at the pump, all that. Pumping my fuel, go around the other side to try and fill up my satellite tank on the passenger side to find out that there is, there's no pump there. There's no hose. So I wasn't able to put fuel in that tank and I didn't, I just stopped it there. I got like 20 gallons in this tank. Which is enough to get me down the road when I get off break here and I'll go fill up at the Loves in Harrisonville. So why would I continue to get pilot Loves if they can't freaking figure the crap out? Like half their pumps are off or broken and the other half are like should have been blocked off because it didn't have hoses. And like, no, nah, I'm not going to continue to get a pilot money. I, I hate coming to Pilot Flying J. They've gone downhill a lot. I don't know why. They even seem used to be like that. It used to be fairly reliable when it came to you know pumps working and all that stuff. But these days it's like I don't know. I don't know if they're going bankrupt or what. It's like everybody's struggling, but does that mean you just completely turn to crap and don't keep, take care of your equipment? And, Whatever. Uh, this load picks up tomorrow morning. No, afternoon. Let's see. Available. 17 or 1800 basically. And then it delivers the next day at 1800 in Clinton, Oklahoma. Where's Clinton? That's up by OKC. It's another Bar S load. That's the Bar S load that I've been to before. Out west of Oklahoma City, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I've been to both of them, but I've been to the one in Clinton a lot more. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna drive the people on the road. I'm just a picky some bitch. That's the truth. If I can avoid it, I will. Like I don't have to be in that freaking place until tomorrow afternoon or evening, and then it doesn't deliver till the next evening. So. As long as I get there by like midnight tonight, I could drive that thing out to Clinton and get on break by six, by five, six o'clock in the morning and then delivers 12 hours later. Bar S isn't going to take me early. So, got no worries, man. I mean, empty miles and loaded miles all together is only 500 and something miles. So, went in there to grab my fuel receipt and I don't guess they drug test at this place. We'll just leave it to that thing. Okay. We're watching. 